We've got a lot to get into here today in regards to this Dynamite show. Good save. But we do have a lot to get into in terms of the Dynamite we, show. We do. We do. Yeah. What do you think? Yeah. It's not the first segment anymore, boss. I'm I'm far past the first segment, brother. What's up with you? So listen, this Dynamite show went up with the Hardys and the Ass Boys to determine the best brother team in AEW. And it was won by the Ass Boys. As it should have been. When, that intro uh, alone. They are my favorite brother tag team. Juice and Jay White tossed Jeff Hardy off the top. Ass Boys hit their finish. And they got the pin. Anyway. What? Makes, I'll talk, I'll talk more about this tonight. Wait, wait, no, no. I want a little bit of it right now, buddy. Well. The Hardys cannot go to Canada. They're going to spend like no, a month he, in Canada. Here's the deal. Here's the deal, because I got yelled at for this, but it's true. What? Remember when Jeff fell off the ropes? Yeah. And I told you guys it was a worked spot, and everyone yes. said, no, it wasn't. Well, it was. It was. And in this match here, they noted that he fell off the top rope and that it was an example of ring rust because he was just coming back. Uh -huh. Now, before you say that that's covering for Jeff Hardy, do you remember the last time they did that? Well, the last time they did that was when Kenny Omega returned. And if you recall, when he first returned, the first the first match he had back, he was wearing tights and he was wearing like a, a, a rash guard over the top. Yes, yes. And then the second time he had the, the, like the rash guard off, but then he had a couple of things on him. And then the third time he was just, he was normal. Because the story when he came back was that he had ring rust, but he didn't. And if you watch the match, he did spots to indicate that he had ring rust. So it's not the first time that they have done this. That's what happened. And I'm sorry if you don't want to believe me, but that's fine. It's wrestling. So anyway, the heels attack the baby faces. Do not introduce these people you're fighting to with uh, to me, please. The heels attack the baby face. Ricky Starks ran down. FTR ran down. They were still outnumbered. The fans chanted CM Punk. He ran down. Runs wild. Goes for the GTS on Juice. Juice bails. And then Punk gets the mic. And uh, he's got no red bag. He makes no mention of MJF. He just said, you know, I'd like to beat you guys' asses tonight, but we're going to do it next week on Collision. And I'm not even a Collision guy, he says. Even though they've never once actually told us that there is any sort of brand split. And he says, I'm not supposed to be here. But I'll see you guys on Saturday. And they celebrate. They plug the match for Saturday. They plug no other matches for CM Punk, even though he's out there celebrating for like a long time. And then away they go. Well, you know, here's the thing about that. I, him, why would he run to the ring with a red bag? Why would he talk about MJF? He was saving somebody, you know, from an attack. That's actually how it should be done. We don't need to hear everybody's theme music when they run out to make the save. And in this case, it was the best thing that could have happened because they let down not only the live crowd, but the people at home. Because you have Punk out there, you have what looks to be an eight-man tag team match, and he goes, and you're going to see it on collision and drop the mic and that was it and then they hit the music which you heard the boo from the crowd but then they got a you got hidden by the music and people started cheering that but they got to figure out a better way because they did it later on with darby as well too where you're not disappointing everybody by just dropping the mic and saying you got to tune into collision there's got to be a smoother way to do this we had the uh, concession stand brawl, which uh, I thought was a really fun match. Thank you. You would. And, uh, of course, everybody interfered, and then they got beat up. And Daniels, best friends, Lucha Bros, Phoenix did big dive on his satna. Mark and Jared alone in the ring. Mark rolls him up and pins him. I liked it. You <laughs> killjoy. It was underbooked. <laughs> I'm going to hit you with some popcorn the next time I see you. We had a BCC promo with Callis and Takeshita. Callis had a funny joke on Twitter, and then Lance one-upped him, if you want to head he up there did, to Twitter. He did. I howled. Takesha looked like a badass, I, No, by I the can't way. say it here on the air. This is not like, no. uh, this is not like Ron Smackdown <laughs> or Impact or whatever. I can't say what he said on the air. And then uh, he promised to get special security for uh, Will Ospreay because he's trying to recruit him for his family. He's building a family, you see. That's the storyline. Jericho, Sammy, and Minoru versus Action Andretti, A.R. Fox, and Darius Martin. This was a fun match. Jericho got the win with the old school lion tamer on poor Darius. Man, did that guy take a beating. Golly. Minoru killed him dead. And then Renee got in to interview him. 
and he starts running down Sting, and Sting and Darby come out, and they have a moment. And essentially, there's going to be a six-man on Sunday, but they're not going to announce Sting and Darby's third man. And unfortunately, Mabel has passed away (laughs) until Saturday on Collision. You want to flip the coin and tell me who you think it is? I do not know who it is. I don't have any clue. Look, but I, then I, we I, had the funniest segment on the show. What's and this is one of those things where, you know, if you're a big fan of something, it's like you find a way to explain it. And the way to explain this was, well, they explained it later. Okay? Which they did. But when they said, we're going to go to the back. We're going to do the first drawing for oh. the Blind Eliminator Tag Team Tournament. Horrible. And they go backstage, and Tony Schiavone and RJ City are there, and there's a there's a tumbler. Okay, they still haven't told us what this is yet, but now that they have the tumbler, you can figure out. Okay, well, they're going to draw names, and it's going to be Battle Bowl. You know, Parejas Increíbles, Mike there Semper Bibi. Thank you. So they spin the thing, and Tony Schiavone reaches and he goes, "Wow, let's pick another one." And then he reaches in and he goes, "Wow." Back to you guys. Throws it. I died. I was like, you went backstage for a drawing, but then that's like that's like going, hey everybody, we're gonna do a raffle. Stick around to the end of the wedding. We're gonna raffle off. uh, I won't say what I was gonna say. They're gonna raffle off, but you know, let's uh, let's let's pull one out of the hat. Here we go, everybody. Oh man. Well, thanks for coming. We'll see you next time. That's what happened here. TK, listen to me. Listen to me. Just because you grew up watching 1991 and 1992 WCW does not mean you need to bring back those concepts and have that level of attention paid to things because Tony doing that, then flinging it, and then apparently he could take it upon himself to just say any old thing during the show. He usually runs down MJF as it is, but damn it, a little later on, he couldn't hold anything to himself. We must keep moving. Elite did a promo. They've been challenged by the BCC, but it will be five on five, and there's only four of them, and one of them already has a match. It'll be three on five. But Eddie Kingston shows up, and he says, I don't like you guys. We're not friends, but I hate Claudio, and so I would be happy to team with you if I choose the fifth man, because that man might not be someone I like, but it's going to be somebody I trust. Adam Cole did a promo putting over the match with MJF, and then MJF came out and put over Cole, but he refuses to give Cole a rematch. He doesn't deserve it. He had Cole beat, he said, which uh, Cole lost it at that line. And then, uh, you know, they're going back and forth about fighting each other now. Adam Cole wants to beat his ass here in Chicago. And then Tony, he can't, he can't help himself. He goes, oh, a second, everybody. I know it's top secret, but I just can't, I just can't control myself. I pulled two names out of that tumbler, and those two names were MJF and Adam Cole. You guys are teaming up in this tournament. They both don't want to do it. And so they're like, not going to do it. No chance. And then uh, and then Tanahashi appears on the screen. He challenges MJF, and MJF doesn't want to do that either. And then this was what I couldn't get. Adam Cole, who wants nothing more than to win the title from MJF, talks MJF into defending against another guy on Sunday. So that's going to be the match. But, hey, the fans didn't think about it, and they loved it. So there you go. We had the brackets for the Owen Hart Cup. This is where they put a graphic up on the screen with the brackets. And I'm looking at the brackets, and all of a sudden, up in the corner, I see CM Punk versus Satoshi Kojima. And tiny little graphic says for Bindor. I said, what? Everybody did. That is the announcement that CM Punk is wrestling on Forbidden Door? A tiny little graphic in the corner of the screen. So he's facing Kojima on Sunday. and Who's the rest been wrestling for all Japan, by the way? The rest of the bracket has uh, Roderick Strong, Samoa Joe, Dustin Rhodes versus Hobbs, Juice Robinson versus Ricky Starks. So my guess is Punk versus Hobbs is the finale and Punk wins. And then for the women, it's Britt and Ruby, Anna and Sky Blue, uh, Nyla and Willow, and Athena and Billy Starks. And if I had to guess, and this is going to be a, a – it's going to throw people off here – I think the finals of this tournament are going to be Athena versus Sky Blue, and Sky Blue wins. That is my prediction. I'll take it. You know, it'll be for a different day, maybe even tomorrow, but maybe they ought to make the Owen Hart Cup on the men's side into kind of like a G1. I have a feeling that they should maybe do that to add some gravity to it. 
We had Orange and Shibata versus Saber and Daniel Garcia. Match is pretty good. The finish was silly. Everyone's like Shibata and Cassidy are friends and teammates. And Orange accidentally punches Shibata, and Shibata gets pinned by Daniel Garcia. So then the match is over, and Shibata just slowly gets to his feet. He's not mad at Orange. He's not disappointed that he lost. He just stands there, and he kind of rubs his chin, and then he starts looking at the belt, and he goes after it. And they announce a four-way for the title coming up at Forbidden Door. Have yes. you ever had your brain removed and then put back in? It causes a lot of long-term issues. Actually, they did a spot in the match where uh, Daniel Garcia, like, he did the headlock Ric Flair, and he, he punched the guy, and uh, and uh, the ref yelled at him. He goes, you hit him in the head! Even though it was like a normal match where you're allowed to hit people in the head. Well, punches but he got, to the head. he got yelled at for that. And he danced. Then we had uh, Statlander versus Taya for the TBS title, which uh, Statlander won. I thought it was fine. Dave thought it sucked. I mean, I don't know. It was all right. It was all right. And then uh, then they did the main event segment, which I was watching this segment, and it was not as good as last week. It was good. But I was just watching it thinking, man, this is rushed. Because first, Eddie comes down to the ring, and he's very upset at Moxley because Moxley's teaming with Claudio who he hates and Moxley's supposed to be his friend. So Moxley comes out and he gets in the ring and he basically tells him like, you know, if you're on the other side, brother, it's fair game. And Kingston says, you, you are the one that drew the line the minute you started teaming with that scumbag. And uh, Moxley mutters something under his breath and then Kingston starts yelling at him for whatever he said, but we don't know. And then finally he just like... Just in a, in, a, in a world, he goes, ah, the partner's going to be Ishii. So Ishii comes out, and then Moxley vanishes. BCC goes after Kingston. Ishii hits the ring to make the save. Fans are chanting for Okada. Brian says he's not coming out. He actually does come out. He goes face-to-face with Danielson. Yuta jumps Okada. Brian tries a knee. He hits Yuta, and then Okada grabs Yuta, and he hits him with the Rainmaker, and they, they celebrate. And the timing was all weird because... You know, he got a long celebration there, and it feels like they could have given more to earlier parts here. Like, there's so much about Moxley and Kingston. Like, that's a big thing. And it was just, boom, they got in and got out. I guess it's kind of a teaser for later, but I felt that this thing could have used a good five, seven more minutes for the whole thing from start to finish and everything they did. But uh, what can you do? I thought it was a very, very good go-home show for Forbidden Door, and I'm very excited for the show. Yeah, I thought it was a little too manic at times, but they can be like that sometimes. And I'll take promos from both Kingston and Moxley coming up on Collision, too, that'll get people talking going into the show and then maybe after that as well. So I'm looking forward to Forbidden Door, and that's where all this is going, so everybody can banter about ratings and such and who's on what show and whether Phil and who's on first? Called himself, yeah, whether Phil should have called himself One Bill and all that sort of stuff. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm happy for Forbidden Door's a Right around here. And Granny, did you know that in the room right now is an Emmy Award winner? I know. I want to congratulate wow. you, Wow. Thank you. The only one here who's ever achieved anything of value. Nice work, Shane. <laughs> Way to go, buddy. <laughs> Let's see this big gold Emmy. Wow. Look at oh, that, nice. everybody. Oh, Holy wow. smokes. That qualifies. That's prefer to hold it by thing. the bottom to it as well. Let's get a picture for the front page. Yeah, you want it. <laughs> <laughs> Granny, they say that Washington is a hot spot for UFOs. Is there any connection between aliens and Bigfoot? The animals are aliens. What? So you're telling me that my cat is from another planet? Yes. Due to Brian's birthday, Brian versus Jungle Boy. Jungle Boy looked a foot taller than Brian. He's not a foot taller than me. God. He's got the big poopy hair. He's, he's maybe. What is that noise? This was sure. with you and Vinny against uh, Chris Dreisack and Ideal Mexican. 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 Yeah. Yes. Brian pulled uh, Chris's panties down in the back. Yeah. His, his panties. <laughs> yeah, he saw his Dreisack. S A J W N G A W N. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions 
of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.